Hi students, this is your recap for lecture number one, The Causes of World War II. Okay. Big picture, Germany wanted to revise the peace settlement of World War I. There was a great deal of resentment in Germany over the terms of World War I, which were the limiting of the German military at 100,000 troops with no air force or navy. Recall that in World War I, it was typical for hundreds of thousands of troops to lose their lives in a single battle, so 100,000 troops was basically not an army. Germany was also forced to give up their colonies, which were distributed amongst the Allies and caused Germans to experience economic hardship. Additionally, they were allowed no political union with Austria. This meant treaties and alliances, as well as a joining of the two countries into a single state. Germany was also forced to accept blame for the war and to make war re reparations to the Allies. All of this resentment led to very negative feelings in Germany, which allowed for the rise of Adolf Hitler, who promised to change the Treaty of Versailles. He comes to power in 1933 uh, using his charisma and the idea of German powerlessness and discontent, which was caused in part by the Great Depression. He blamed internal enemies of Germany, as he saw them, those being Jews, communists, and liberals of all sorts, and also blamed external forces, Poland, France, Austria, Hungary, Yugoslavia, and Czechoslovakia, as not having done their part in the war to support Germany. In 1935, Hitler began the remilitarization of Germany. Uh, he reinstated universal military service amongst young men, and also remilitarized the Rhineland, which is a German region that borders France. It had been demilitarized after World War I to give the French a kind of buffer. The German army also participated in the Spanish Civil War alongside of Italy and used it as a place to train the army and to hone the skills of the German Air Force or Luftwaffe. Uh, and as a result of this war, Francisco Franco would become the dictator of Spain. In 1938, Germany would have Anschluss, or Union, with Austria, um, the goal being to... the goal being to join all German peoples together. Um, so Austria, of course, is largely ethnically German, uh, and that was the reasoning behind that, and France and Great Britain choose to do nothing. Later that year, Hitler would annex the Sudetenland, which is a portion of Czechoslovakia, using the same logic. Uh, and once again, France and Great Britain would do nothing. However, after this, France and Great Britain called what they called the Munich Conference um, to try and stop Hitler's expansion. Uh, and it was here that the policy of appeasement became the dominant policy when dealing with Germans as well as other revisionists of the World War I peace terms. Um, out of this, Germany agreed not to expand any farther, and the British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain said we had achieved peace for our time. Uh, however, in 1939, less than a year later, uh, Hitler's no more expansion would prove to be a lie. Uh, he would occupy the rest of Czechoslovakia, and this caused quite an international stir now that he had broken the Munich Conference Agreement, uh, and France and Great Britain decided to guarantee the security of Poland. Uh, now Joseph Stalin, the dictator of the Soviet Union, had been watching all of this very carefully, and he thinks that Great Britain and France are trying to send Hitler towards him, uh, to send him farther east. And because of this, Stalin and Germany sign a non-aggression pact. Uh, which contained a secret clause that secretly divided up Eastern Europe. Germany would be given political domination over Western Poland, and the USSR would be given domination over Eastern Poland, Romania, Finland, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. Big picture, Italy. Italy looks back to the Roman glories of and attempts to recreate the Roman Empire. Uh, so in the early 1930s, Italy would annex Libya, uh, and then in 1935 and 36, it would start a war with Ethiopia. Recall that Ethiopia had defeated Italian attempts to turn it into a colony, 
and afterwards, uh, Italy had been humiliated internationally. To remedy this, Mussolini sent 250,000 soldiers with tanks, poison gas, artillery, and air support. Overall, Italy would take 2,000 casualties, while the people of Ethiopia would suffer more than 275,000 casualties. Uh, this caused a great deal of international outrage, and at the same time, no one was willing to take a stand against Italy. Italy would also participate in the Spanish Civil War, and in 1939, it would annex Albania. And the reason for this was that Mussolini viewed Albania as access to the Balkans, which was a key component of the old Roman Empire. Uh, Mussolini had also tried to take Albania because that was originally what Italy was promised at the end of World War, something that they were denied. On the map here you can see uh, Italy on the left and Albania next to it, uh, near the heel of the boot, as they say. Uh, so that was their access point into the Balkans, which is Albania, Macedonia, and Greece, chiefly. Uh, to the right, you can see the extent of the old Roman Empire, and you can see how Libya, which is this nation here, um, is part of the old Roman Empire. And Ethiopia, farther south, while not part of the original Roman Empire, was near enough for Mussolini's purposes. Uh, and you can also see how the Balkans figured prominently in that empire. Japan. Uh, Japan's goals were in line with Italy and Germany's uh, in wanting to revise the terms of the Treaty of Versailles. Okay. Japan would start a war with China in 1931, uh, and in 1931 to 1932, they would conquer the Manchurian Peninsula, which is this area here. It includes Korea, uh, what is Korea today, uh, and this is where the Japanese invasion began. Um, and in 1933, the League of Nations would condemn Japan over this action. This causes Japan to leave the League and follow a ultra-nationalist -nat and pro-military policy. Japan recognizes that it needed territory and resources to continue their expansion. Remember that Japan is a relatively small island and is not resource-rich. In 1937, Japan would begin a full invasion of China. Uh, the first battle was the Battle of Beijing. Uh, and Japan wins this fairly easily. Next, Shanghai and Nanjing, the capital, uh, were attacked by Japan. These are the two other largest cities in China at the time. Uh, the Navy and Air Force would bomb Shanghai, killing thousands of civilians and securing a landing space for the army which was bound for Nanjing. In December of 1937, Shanghai and Nanjing were firmly under Japanese control, and the Japanese would continue to win victories, extensive victories over the next six months, and eventually taking over all of the areas seen in pink on this map. Uh, notice that it follows mostly a coastal pattern, and down here there are several important docks and port cities that were taken by the Japanese. The Rape of Nanjing uh, is one of the great atrocities of World War II and something that is frequently overlooked by high school classes. Um, and it was a preview of the horror to come in World War II. Uh, it was the first city to experience heavy urban bombing when tens of thousands of civilians were killed, um, simply to soften resistance to the Japanese army. Um, after the city's surrender, uh, the greater atrocity occurred, however, when, over the course of two months, Japanese soldiers would rape over 7,000 women and murder hundreds of unarmed women and soldiers and burn one-third of the homes in the city. Additionally, 400,000 civilians died when they were used for bayonet practice or were machine-gunned into open pits to die. During September of 1937, Chinese nationalist forces and communist forces would finally agree to work together, creating an army of about 1.7 million soldiers to fight the Japanese. 
By 1941, they had succeeded in tying down about half of Japan's army, 750,000 troops. Uh, while the alliance was uneasy and had numerous clashes over territory and political influence, which made their resistance less effective, um, it would have long-term impacts on the country. Uh, the first of which was the training of effective communist guerrilla forces and mastering of tactics that would be used later against U.S. forces during the Cold War. Uh, the Chinese guerrillas would attack the infrastructure, bridges, roads, and rails uh, that the Japanese were using and harass Japanese troops in an attempt to weaken their control over the area and gain the popular support of civilians. The communists were far more successful at this than the nationalists and positioned themselves ultimately to take control of China after World War II. All of this led in 1940 to Japan signing the Tripartite Pact with Italy and Germany. The Tripartite Pact was a 10-year military and economic pact uh, that provided for alliance and assistance uh, as deemed possible by all three parties. And while Germany and Italy would not have much direct contact with the Japanese and vice versa, uh, they did support each other's goals internationally and made up the Axis powers of World War I. Uh, Additionally, Japan would sign in 1941 a neutrality pact with the USSR in an attempt to further solidify its control of the Pacific region. Uh, after this neutrality pact had been signed, Japan began expanding into the Pacific Islands towards uh, Hawaii and the United States zone of control. That's all for this lecture.